Hey, it's over from BeerDietProject.com and today I want to talk about lactofermentation, lactofermented vegetables, uh, things like pickles or sauerkraut, uh, kimchi. Uh, this is kimchi right here. This is uh, sauerkraut. So uh, what exactly is it and why do I even bother taking this? You know, why am I even making this <laughs> video really? Um, here I've got a bottle of probiotics. Now, if you look at the... Uh, list of uh, ingredients it's basically a bunch of bacteria good bacteria gut flora kind of bacteria lactobacillus a bunch of different strains up to like there's like 10 different strains here of uh, lactobacillus uh, bifidobacterium like streptococcus something i mean i can't even pronounce um, half of these uh, strains but let me tell you how i came about all of this and then i can that way I can explain, you know, why would you want to even consider lacto-fermented foods? So for those of you who don't know me, I used to be really, really sick. I used to weigh 202 pounds and I got to, I was fortunate enough to understand, uh, you know, that most of your health and uh, most of your health comes from the bacteria that's living in your gut, what they call your gut flora. So all these probiotics, is essentially what you're going to be getting from lacto-fermented foods. Lacto, meaning lactobacillus, produces lactic acid. Lactic acid, it not only helps preserve food and gives it that sour, tangy uh, flavor or, or mouthfeel, if you want to call it that, uh, to foods, but it's the bacteria that your body needs in order to be healthy. It's, it's basically your, your body's immune system is what keeps bad bacteria from eating your body inside out. So um, the way that I came about all of this was um, I, I was learning how to brew beer. I was teaching how to brew beer, learning all about fermentation. And then I just heard uh, someone mention something along the lines of, um, you know, food fermenting inside of the body. And before, that wouldn't have called my attention, but because I was very interested in brewing beer and the uh, fermentation process in brewing beer, I started to research and go through it. And here's what I found. Before any of this knowledge, the extent of my knowledge was basically if I was hungry, if I ate food, I was go just going to put food in my mouth, chew it up until it was safe to gulp down, and let the stomach take care of the rest, and that was it. I did not know anything past that. But then later I understood that food does indeed go past the stomach into your small intestines and that's where it ferments. And fermentation is just a, a way uh, to describe bacteria digesting food, breaking it down, and it breaks it down small enough for your body to be able to absorb the nutrients. And then anything else, just like in brewing beer, there's troop left over. Then, well, that's basically the uh, poop that comes out of us. It's the leftovers from fermentation. So once I understood that, then I started to understand other things. This batch of sauerkraut um, was made a little bit different than what the traditional way is. But essentially, the way that you make sauerkraut is you take cabbage and you shred it in little pieces like this. And then you just put it in salt water. You use salt water, and for salt, you want to make sure that you use something that has a lot of minerals. And so for that, I use Celtic uh, sea salt. And so Celtic sea salt is basically a salt that hasn't been processed. It still has all the uh, minerals. You can use other salts like uh, uh, Himalayan salt if it's pure enough, if it's stone ground that has all the minerals. That's essentially what you need. So you need the minerals, you need the water, and you need the right temperature. And now, it, it's no coincidence that the best fermentation temperature for any of these lacto-fermented foods is the same temperature as the body. So roughly 98 degrees Fahrenheit or about 37 degrees Celsius. And when, when I heard that, it just clicked that your body's essentially the perfect fermentation vessel. It has water, it has the minerals, it has the right temperature and the right pH in order for your body to ferment inside. And so eating lacto-fermented foods, basically what you're doing is you're feeding your body good bacteria, good gut flora, and your gut flora is essentially your immune system. And so 
The way to understand this is if you've ever if you've ever looked at a plant and the plant has a leaf that is either browning or has a hole like a bugs have been eating it. Well, the problem is not at the leaf. The problem is actually down in the roots because the roots don't have the minerals, the nutrition, they don't have the gut flora, the probiotics, the good bacteria to protect the plant from being eaten by bugs. And in the body, it's essentially the same thing. If you don't have the good bacteria, all the uh, strains of lactobacillus and all this inside of your body, you're, you don't have anything to protect your body from being eaten by other bad bacteria, right? And so I personally have really grown to uh, love the flavor. This is kimchi. This is uh, sauerkraut. A lot of people really, really hate the flavor. I actually didn't like this much myself when I first started. But now I actually really, really enjoy the flavor, especially now that these have been uh, aging for a while. It's kind of spicy uh, kimchi. And, and so I don't look at lacto-fermented foods as just a way to preserve foods because lactobacillus, or, um, you know, the lactic acid does actually help preserve foods. It does actually help to keep the foods. But that's not really the only reason why I use, um, you know, lacto fermented foods. And also, some people just like the flavor, you know, like especially for pickles, you know, dill pickles, like the actual uh, fermented, lacto fermented pickles. There's a lot of foods that used to be healthy, like ketchup and mustard. They used to be lacto fermented. Now they are, they just add vinegar and high fructose corn syrup, which is unhealthy. And, you know, they took what used to be a good, healthy food and turned it into a bad food. Uh, but really what you're doing when you're eating these is not so much just preserving the food or not so much just giving it a different flavor, but you're essentially giving your body food that has been pre-digested. Because if you, if you just eat it like that, it's going to be digested in, the, in, in your intestines. But the thing is, if you have bad bacteria in your intestines, and we all have bad bacteria, you can't get rid of all the bad bacteria, but you wanna have more good bacteria than you wanna do good bacteria. But if you have you know, a lot of bad bacteria and you just throw in any food, then all the bacteria are going to eat. And so the bad bacteria is going to populate, and that's the problem. You know, before eating all these fermented foods, I was eating your typical, uh, you know, pub foods, because, you know, I mean, I'm a beer drinker. I used to eat nothing but like pizza, burgers, uh, hot wings. And, you know, from brewing beer, I understood that heating up food, boiling, pasteurizing, that's essentially killing all the bacteria, but that's both good and bad bacteria. And I didn't realize that if you eat nothing but bad bacteria, well, eventually that's your good bacteria inside your body is going to diminish because you're not feeding foods that they eat and you're feeding it foods that other bad bacteria eat. And you get to a point where bad bacteria overtakes the good bacteria and that's when real health, health problems begin to show up. And that's essentially what happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually fortunate enough, I consider myself fortunate enough to have gotten to that point even though it sucked and it was bad. I'm fortunate enough because it woke me up and it actually helped me see the real benefits of these foods. And so that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, if you want to learn how to make these uh, lacto fermented foods, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting some videos on how to make this. It's, it's very simple. You just add the vegetables to salt water, essentially one cabbage, you shred it up, add enough water to cover it up and add about a tablespoon of sea salt. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now there are different methods and if you want to learn more on like what makes it more sour, what makes it less sour, or if you want to um, learn how to use other strains, like sometimes I'll take a capsule of these and just add it to it as it's fermenting. You know, I'll do certain things like that. And if you want to learn something that's more advanced, be sure to click the uh, link below this video. I'll have some uh, resources where you can go learn more about that. And also stay tuned because I'll be posting some of those uh, videos in the uh, future. But um, really, if you haven't yet included, if you have yet to decide whether or not you want to include 
lacto fermented foods in your diet, you're missing out. I think this is the real food that we should be eating. And who knows how long we've actually been brought up thinking that the uh, typical food that you see at restaurants and all these other uh, places, you know, we've been brought up to think that that's real food and it really is not. This is real food. I now understand the term raw, not just raw, but live foods filled with enzymes, good bacteria. Highly, highly recommend that you look more into lacto fermented foods. So that's my video on what is lacto fermented foods and why I started to take them. I'll be posting more videos on how to actually make it. And I'll have resources below this video for you if you want to go ahead and get started now. So um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, talk to you later.